In a spirit of thanksgiving and rededication, and with a deep trust in God's guidance, let's celebrate together this evening, from our own unique point of view, the International Year of the Woman. Our focus will be on women at Valparaiso University, on all of us here tonight, and on all who have been working together since 1925, when the school became a Lutheran university. With our heads in the sky, our eyes ever heavenward, we have become more than just a helping hand. And now we will praise, honor, remember, yes, chuckle, as we see just a few of the women who helped make VU history. It was 1931, during Depression years, when men of the Lutheran University Association felt women of the church were also needed to strengthen their faltering hopes for a strong Lutheran University. A few women who often accompanied their husbands to LUA meetings did organize. With Mrs. E. W. Schultz of Sheboygan, as president of the National Women's Committee, as it was called, the group immediately gave assistance in financing the physical education and economics departments. In following years, expansion of the Women's Auxiliary included chapters in such strategic centers as Chicago, Valparaiso, Milwaukee, Hammond, Saginaw, and Sheboygan, all chapters represented by the women in this group. The women spotted urgent needs at the university and for their next projects pledged $2,500 for new beds for the girls in Altruria Hall. While the men in Lemke were given the luxury of sleeping on new mattresses. At this convention, notice how the women give rapt attention to a co-ed who is giving a talk on life at Altruria Hall. We know that co-ed as Ruth Lauby, wife of the Dean of the School of Business. She must have touched their hearts, describing the cold and barren atmosphere of the dorms, since all of the money raised during the Depression years was used to make both Altruria and Lemke dorms more livable. Almost $16,000 was contributed by 19 chapters. The presidents who succeeded Mrs. Schultz were Mrs. H. W. Bartels of Cleveland, on the extreme right of this picture of Founders Rock, and Mrs. H. A. Eberlein of Detroit, who is still living and remembers our convention each year with a personal note. We also want to mention a few women on campus during these early years of the Guild. Mrs. Catherine E. Bowden, who graduated from VU, was asked to be school librarian in 1926 and built a respectable library from shambles left by a fire in 1923. She treasured her books and loved the students, retiring in 1959. Mrs. Hazel Guillemot joined the faculty in 1930 serving as a specialist in Romance languages until her retirement in 1969. And many, many students who ate meals in the basement dining room of Altruria Hall will always remember Mrs. Verdi Garrison, who with her husband managed Altruria's kitchen until it was no longer used. How did this man slip into our all-woman program and even steal a kiss from our burr at that? Give me a little kiss, William Burr, what are you gonna miss, William Burr?
We will just have to admit him, since to Reverend Carl H. Henricks, we owe a great big thanks for helping us first get organized. He changed the name of our auxiliary sometime in the 40s, too. He was tired of hearing women pronounce it auxiliary and renamed it Valparaiso University Guild. For that, we love and thank him, too. In 1940, we really proved to the school and to the board that they could depend on women, for in that year we gave our all to the current fund, all $9,349.56 of it. A great lady, Dr. Vera T. Hahn, was hired in 1941. Under her leadership, the speech and drama department was created. This determined and courageous teacher retired in 1973. At its 10th anniversary convention, the National Guild was introduced to Valpo's new president, Dr. O.P. Kretzman. Guild women, inspired by his vision and faith, courageously accepted the challenge of a new project he presented to them raising $75,000 within the next five years for a new girl's dormitory, Guild Hall. Mrs. W. N. Hoppy of Cleveland was president, and under her vigorous leadership, 2,600 women, representing 42 chapters, contributed $16,192 during the first year of the five-year plan. After her years as president, Mrs. Hoppy was the first woman to receive the Lumen Christi Award. It was presented to her during graduation ceremonies in 1956 in gratitude for her continuing hours of toil and personal sacrifice for Valpo U. Even during those darkened war years, while Mrs. A. A. Taube of Oak Park was national president and inspiring leader, Guild women felt God had given them a great task to perform, and with his blessing, resolved to reach for their goal to build Guild Hall. It was also during the war years when more courses for women were added to the curriculum. Dr. Thora Moulton was appointed to teach in the Foreign Language Department, where she continues to instill a love of German into her students. Outgoing, popular with her students, Mrs. Ralph Schenk also taught German for many years and is a Valpo Guild chapter honorary. When the cornerstone of Guild Hall was laid at four o'clock in the afternoon, September 28, 1946, Guild women had accumulated $70,617 for the new dorm. In July, 1947, when Guild Hall was formally dedicated in impressive ceremonies together with Memorial Hall, the great task of building a dorm was completed and the project closed. The Guild had raised $98,255. It was with great pride that Miss Louise Nicolay of South Bend, Guild President, could joyfully say at the dedication, by the grace of God, and with united prayers and efforts of 4,000 women of Valparaiso University Guild, we present Guild Hall to the Board of Trustees of Valparaiso University. May all those who dwell within its walls come under the influence of God's gracious word. In the late 40s, when enrollment dramatically increased with returning veterans, the faculty also was increased with more women hired. Mrs. Roland Seavers is the only woman still teaching in the College of Business. Janet is a graduate of Valpo and last year was honored as one of the university's most effective teachers. Another great lady who has given boundless energy to her classes and deep loyalty to her students is Mrs. Margareta Tangerman for a few years Dean of Women, and until her retirement in 1974, Chairman of the Department of Social Work. Miss Helen Olson, who calmly guides the destiny and activities of this student union, arrived on campus in 1950. 
To get an accurate description of Valpo students, ask her, and she'll always say, they are great. By the mid-40s, the Guild had been so blessed in numbers and vitality that the position of full-time executive secretary was created. In January 1945, Mrs. Gail Schwiebert was appointed to this highly important office. With charm and quiet determination, she helped stimulate growth of many new chapters. When the Schwieberts moved away two years later, So Heidbrink was appointed executive secretary. Surely we must all agree that our entire guild membership has been influenced by So's love of her savior, as she worked side by side with all of us for Valpo U. In 1962, the Alumni Association made her an honorary alumnus. Recognizing the high values she helped to nurture at this school, the university bestowed on her the Lumen Christi Award at graduation exercises last spring, making her the second woman in the history of the university to receive it. That was one of the sweetest scenes at graduation. The momentum of activity, the bond of affection, and the mutual faith that guild women express year after year at conventions such as this one is a remarkable and a beautiful thing. Build with the guild was the slogan chosen. And when Guild Hall was completed in 1947, the guild was ready to meet the challenge of bigger goals for an expanding university. The next project was to raise $100,000 in the shortest possible time for a small prayer chapel to be part of the large university chapel which would one day become the heart and center of Valpo U. Under the capable leadership of Mrs. Walter Hansen of San Jose, California, she is gracious pouring coffee at breakfast in the Alturia dining room during the 1951 convention. All chapters responded well, and at the end of a three-year period, funds for the prayer chapel reached $87,000, the remaining $13,000 to be raised through memorial wreaths. Gloria Christi Chapel, as it was named, was formally dedicated on the same day, September 27, 1959, as the Chapel of the Resurrection. These are a few of the words from Dr. Kretzmann's address. This is the Chapel of the Guild, dedicated to the glory of Christ and a shining memorial to hundreds of women who worked and prayed for the chapel. And you here give those who will come after you a place, a lovely hallowed place to worship the Lord in beauty and in holiness.
With that same humble, steadfast dedication, guild women are still striving to serve Valpo U. This handsome group of chapter presidents, all Valpo alums, was taken in 1970. Now, just listen to what our leading ladies are still doing. Queens who reigned over us guild women so graciously and effectively during the 50s were Mrs. E.T.J. Berner of Mattoon, Illinois. She's standing second from the right. Mrs. William Drews, now of Fairview Park, Ohio, standing at the far left. And next to her, Mrs. Roy C. Frank of Bethesda, Maryland. During their reigns, they continued to envision big things, and we were all asked to put all our money into two funds, or as they might have sent the edict, concentrate all of your efforts on two main projects. One was supplying furnishings for new dorms, Dow and Kreinhater. The other is one of the greatest blessings ever. There stands that chapel of the resurrection we helped build too. For the Guild's 30th birthday, we moved back to old campus and with $30,000 shined up the old library building into Heritage Hall. Mrs. Frederick Schmaltz of Minneapolis led the Guild in that ambitious endeavor. She's standing in the center at the back. In 1963, Mrs. Cyril Wismar, standing at the far right, of Marblehead, Massachusetts, was not only first lady of the guild, but the lady with the pretty hats. Wouldn't she have loved to wear some of these? In your leaves to bonnet, with all the frills upon it, you'll be the grandest lady in the Eastern parade. During her reign, all of our $40,000 raised was used to put much needed butter on faculty bread. Mrs. Lewis Jacobs of Decatur, Indiana, saw to it that furnishings were put into the brand new admissions building that the Guild gave to Valpo the year before. Under her guidance, we were convinced that new walks and new lights would beautify the campus. During Mrs. Jacobs' term of office, and also during the presidency of Mrs. Fred Freilich of Appleton, we got the Home Economics Building cooking on $36,423 worth of burners. Betty Freilich also coaxed us to give a lot of healing money to the College of Nursing. Dr. Dorothy Smith, dean of that college, is the first woman to serve as an academic dean at Valparaiso University. Moving forward into the 70s, Mrs. Jean Bales of Bourbonus, Illinois, and Mrs. Herschel Medoran of Omaha spent our money on an array of facilities and equipment, not exactly frivolous. A nuclear reactor for the physics department, the closed circuit TV system in the School of Nursing. The redesigning and refacing of the Arts Music Building. A new lecture hall in Neal Science Center. And the ever popular lighted tennis courts. And a sensational publication came off the press. The Gourmet Guild Cookbook. Our revered national president, Janie Lichtfuss, tells us that this promotion of good meals throughout the land has already netted $27,000 for the Guild Scholarship Fund, and that three students on campus this year are benefiting from this aid. Big things from the Guild will continue in the same way with Janie, a Valpo grad, presiding at our convention this year, September 1975. How easy to catch her spirit of joy and to share her faith as we plan together for new Valpo projects. Presently, we can proudly say there are 53 women teaching on the VU faculty, 13 of them having PhD degrees. Besides these fine women teachers, 
There are a few other women on campus you will remember well. Mrs. Ray Larson became the university's first alumni secretary in 1951. Elsie crusaded for many improvements and enjoyed helping others. In the 50s, Mrs. Byron Ferguson became the university's first director of financial aid. Joe is now senior program officer for the Federal Commission on College Aid. Of course, we women are prejudiced, but we don't think the books would balance at VU if financier Arlene Lesh were not in the position of controller or that the university would have reached its present maturity without the assistance Jane Rock has given the administration throughout the years in the Department of Development and the business offices. Both Arlene and Jane are longtime, very active members of our Valpo chapter of the Guild. And all over the campus, there are devoted, efficient secretaries. We know all of the different deans she has served could not have deaned as well without Dorothy Hersher, now secretary to Vice President Streetelmeyer. Miss Dolores Rouge is our effective dean of women, loved by the entire campus. She's still too valuable to be put into history, but we think she would have been proud of early sororities too, like this one. Alpha Z Epsilon organized in 1919. With Mary Fitz of Traverse City, Michigan, feminine leadership in the student body has finally come into its own on our campus. Mary has just begun her term as president of the Student Senate the first woman to serve in that capacity since Barbara Bernthal served during the war years. Dr. Mahila Hayes became Valpo's first director of counseling. She died in 1973. Known and loved by all of us, these two women are the late Mrs. O.P. Kretzman and Oma, Dr. Kretzman's mother. Flora died in 1970 and Oma in 1973. No guild woman at convention time would miss slipping into the university bookstore where Mrs. Lorena Zimmerman, now Hayes, was a longtime manager to buy some memento to take home. These people we hope will be with us for a long time. Mrs. Norman Nagel, Betsy, now Executive Director of the Guild. Mrs. O.P. Kretzman, Betty. Mrs. A.G. Hughley, Ray. The men on the last two pictures are so precious to us that we don't need to identify them.
of these hectic years of guild work with expanding projects, chapters budding all over the country, guild bulletins to be edited, speech making, letter writing, planning conventions, meeting buses, sharpening pencils. Well, you know who has been our guiding light. Burr Ruprecht was appointed. was appointed executive secretary in 1952 after So Heidbrink realized she could not adequately perform two such highly important tasks, the growing responsibilities of the guild executive secretary <laughs> as well as serving as secretary to President Kretzmann. All of you have a vivid picture of, at convention time of Burr gliding through throngs of women, always poised, always smiling, always gets your name right with your own face, too. And you know how talented this lady can run a convention. Perhaps you all don't know that Wyoiga, Wisconsin should mean a great deal to Guild. For it was there that on one cold day in March, Mrs. George Lilly delivered an eight pound, eight ounce little girl. <laughs> Named Bernice Ella. <laughs> Within a few years, however, it was Shano that Bernice really called home, for here she attended school, just like the rest of us ordinary women. Bernice is the little girl in the center of the picture wearing a sweater. <laughs> when she didn't have to keep an eye on her three younger brothers, she was practicing voice. Even Madame schumann Heink heard her high school choral group sing once. Or perhaps preparing a speech. She won prizes in oratory. Or roller skating all over town. Or just swimming. When a young teacher named Amo H. came to Shauna, <laughs> he spotted her immediately and asked her to please take the name, name of Ruprecht. They were married in 1929 and have lived happily ever after. Their three children, John, Jean, and Mary, all grown now with children of their own, Jean's daughter is a freshman this year at BU. We'll always remember how their mother managed to turn many a chore into a happy, all-family affair. Through her 23 years of service, Burr has been able to convey that same spirit of Christian love and fellowship to all of our 5,700 Guild members as we work together for Balfour U. Perhaps every illustrious career is marked by one experience that stands out above all the others. For Burr, that mountaintop experience was the dedication of the Gloria Christie Chapel. <coughs> Walking with her is Mrs. Frank, then Guild President. She remembers a low moment as being a thoroughly thunderstruck and washed out picnic at the dunes. <laughs> during one summer guild convention. In 1967, the Alumni Association made Burr an honorary member. To them and to all of us, she continues a warm, wonderful friend. Now, aren't you glad you're a woman and a guild woman at that? In this production, there are no bit parts. We are all stars in the great cast of Balfour's leading ladies. 
The Guild's gathering of more than one and one half million dollars over the past 44 years. The kind word of encouragement from a chapter member to a student interested in Valpo. Devoted teaching, which inspires a love for learning. Concerned listening and counsel for a student with a need quiet efficiency in pursuing the countless services and administrative details necessary in a university. Each performance is an important one. Valparaiso University is indeed unique. And as we women play our varied roles as part of this university, who can measure the scope of our contribution to our world? Only God. May he continue to guide us all. Thank <laughs> you. 